we've learned a decent bit about partial derivatives and how to compute them for functions of several variables, but we want to extend the idea behind simple partial derivatives and start thinking of some advanced techniques that we can use along with what we already have. So if we go all the way back to introductory calculus, what you might remember <clears throat> is that if you have some function, y is a function of x, but you also have x being parameterized by you know, t or something like that, then if we wanted to find the derivative of y with respect to t, we can, we can use the chain rule to chain those derivatives together. We can say that the derivative of y with respect to t is its derivative with respect to x <clears throat> times the derivative of x with respect to t. It's chaining those together using the chain rule in the, the way that we remember doing it when we learned how to take derivatives in general. But with partial derivatives and uh, functions of multiple variables, this is a little more complicated. So if I have a function of two variables, x and y, and that function is differentiable. Now, uh, a function is considered differentiable, uh, a sufficient condition, it's not necessary, but generally speaking, it, you'll want this. If the partial derivatives for each variable are continuous, then we say that those uh, that the function is differentiable. So let's just for practical purposes right now say that the partial derivatives exist and they're continuous. So if they're <clears throat> if if this function is differentiable, but for each of those variables they can be parameterized by the by some t, and then those functions. That their parameter that the parameter is passed to are themselves differentiable. So basically, just derivatives exist all over the place, right? And then we can find the derivative of w with respect to that parameter t by finding the partial derivatives with respect to x and y and multiplying them by the standard derivatives with respect to t. So the first thing I want to point out here is notice how the script is the same. We have, or the, the script here matches those, the way we normally write derivatives. But the script here is that partial, that curved D. And the, re and the reason that is, is because this is a derivative with respect to a single variable. And, and the reason why I say that is because if X and Y are both functions of T, if I were to plug this in here, I would actually get a function of just one variable. W would actually be a function of t and t alone. So you can end up getting a derivative that's with respect to a single variable, but you do it through using these partial derivatives. And then sort of the shorthand way is to, th if you think of these like fractions, they're not fractions at all. They don't, they're, they're not. But if you think of them like fractions, Notice how the dx's would cancel and the dy's would cancel, and you'd end up with like a dw dt in both cases. So the sort of shorthand way, the kind of cheap, cheaty way to think about it is to, to find the partial derivative or to find the derivative for w, you write out each partial derivative. So in this case, partial with respect to x and partial with respect to y. And then you choose this derivative that will cancel the fraction. So I know I need dw dt, and I have partial of w with respect to x. So I need some, so if I have a dx here, and I don't want it, I need a dx here. And I don't have a dt here, and I want it, so I put it there, right? And so the, the fractions cause that to cancel. Again, totally not the, the mathematical rigorous way to do it, but for practical purposes, it's a pretty easy way to remember how to do these things. So we can extend that. Let's go all the way out to n number of, of variables. Instead of two variables, now we have some n number of variables. And each of those are, you know, have some sort of function of t. Well, then the way we do this is to get that derivative with respect to t, we find the partial of this one, the partial of the second one, the partial of the nth one, and then we multiply it by what, what you would need to cancel, cancel. 
So those cancel DT, those cancel DT, those cancel DT. And that's the process in general about how to get partial derivatives with the chain rule.